And we are back um, live. All right, Mr. Raines. Uh, thank you, um, Ms. Matthews. Uh, just to kind of button up, finish up those questions, I'm going to refer to the person whom you disclosed, whom you identified to us off the record as person A for just a few questions. Um, Ma'am, the, the, this person A, is that someone who has been within your home over the course of the past six months? No. Uh, this person A, are there other family members that have been over of, of that person A who's been over at your house in the past six months? No. <clears throat> um, Ma'am, are you still not working? Correct. Those are all the questions that I have for you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Leon, any follow up to that? Uh, Ms. Matthews, is there a current CPS invest investigation going on concerning Wayne? Yes. It, who is the uh, person that is being investigated? It would be Wayne's father and stepmother. Thomas Corsa. Yet he just went and got an ex parte order saying that you were causing all these problems. Is that correct? Correct. And that the, he actually puts in here that the Laney's psychiatrist or psychologist didn't want her seeing you. Is that correct? Correct. Yet uh, Mr. Corser and Mr. Honeywell uh, were allowing the children to have visits without your consent or approval or around you. Is that correct? Correct. And that was after this case was open. Is that true? Yes. Thank you. I have no further questions. Uh, well, to just be a briefly based on, on those questions, ma'am, are you the person after the ex parte order was entered in that case involving Wayne? Are you the person that reported that it was Mr. Uh, Corser who was responsible for some kind of uh, uh, sexual incident that occurred to Wayne? No, we were aware of this beforehand. Okay, so you're aware of this beforehand, but after the ex parte order was served on you, is that when you contacted CPS? No, I had discussed this with CPS previously um, and nothing, nothing was done about it. So when I discussed it with the CPS caseworker again, she had made the comment to report it again. I see. And so when you say when you re we discussed it with the CPS worker uh, again, you mean after uh, June 18th when this when the ex parte was done. Am I right? Before before my ex parte order that I was served by from Tom. Yes. OK. When did you report this this uh, incident for the second time to CPS? I could not give you a date. I'm sorry. Um, was it within the last month? It would be pretty close, yeah. When did the when did the CPS investigation open against Mr. Corser? To your knowledge, I haven't heard back from them. Okay, well, you've answered some questions from your counsel about being aware of a CPS investigation being open. So my question is, when was that opened? I've received no, I've received nothing. All I have is the phone call that I called. Okay, when did you call? I don't have the date. It would been a, it would have been around a month. Okay. All right, um, I have no further questions. Thank you, ma'am. All right, anything else of this witness, Mr. Leon? No, Judge. All right, um, all right, very good. Thank you, ma'am. All right, so Mr. Raines, any closing statements? Uh, yes, Your Honor, we had, uh, on February 1st, my client filed a verified motion for entry of an ex parte order for exclusive parenting time and for a change of custody. We have limited um, the testimony uh, during the course of these proceedings to the, um, the ex parte order, which your honor had uh, granted. And as you have learned through the course of these proceedings, there was certainly um, substantial reason to grant that uh, order. As you have heard from the testimony, um, there are three children 
uh, Lainey, Ashlyn, and Layla in this relationship, ages 10, 6, and 3, respectively. The parties have had a joint legal and joint physical custody arrangement with, interestingly, a reasonable parenting time schedule for both uh, parties. In, in other words, there is no specific schedule um, and they have shared custody. Um, we filed the motion uh, based upon uh, disclosures from the eldest child, Lainey, that she had been uh, sexually assaulted by her um, step-sibling, Wayne Corser, um, whom is the child of um, Miss Matthews with a Tom Corser. Um, that they, I complimented my client and would still do that, that Mr. Honeywell did not rush to this court and ask that there be an order put in place immediately. Rather, he approached Miss Matthews and asked that there, and in fact, Mr. Corser uh, had participated in sort of non-CPS family team meetings, I would call them, where there was an agreement whereby Wayne would uh, be restricted from having contact with these girls, as he had clearly victimized Laney and possibly Ashlyn. Unfortunately, and my client then began counseling at Parkside Counseling with two separate counselors for these, the eldest two girls, Laney and Ashlyn. Um, unfortunately, uh, without the knowledge of Mr. Honeywell, um, the uh, mother had changed the schedule and allowed for contact to occur, which uh, then led to a further incident uh, that occurred that you have heard some testimony about, particularly from um, one of the counselors, I believe that was um, Amber, um, her, Amber Holland, um, and in that incident, um, it was a, really a sexual assault was perpetrated against the child as you have, I believe, heard described with perhaps those words from Ms. Holland. She disclosed an incident with Wayne trying to take her pants off, causing Laney to try to hide into a bathroom. She has also talked about uh, the child having disclosed to her that Wayne had uh, had asked uh, Laney to touch his penis and that Laney had touched uh, his penis. She has also reported that she has had uh, problems of head lice that the mother's feeling and that she has had concerns about not feeling um, clean at mom's house. These are disclosures that the eldest child had made. There was a second counselor that the child was involved in. In fact, I think it was reverse order um, and that was Ms. Hancock who was also aware of concerns, and she's from uh, Parkside Family Counseling as well, and there were concerns about, uh, about Wayne that were expressed by the child there as well. So I don't, I don't think it's disputed that there are concerns. Ms. Uh, Matthews realized that we needed to restrict her son from having contact with these girls, but she failed to do so. That is why this court had entered the order and the child, uh, that child as well as Ashlyn were both involved in counseling appropriately. The counselors have testified that incidents have happened, unfortunately, at the mother's home. That has now uh, really, uh, resulted, as you've heard today, in an order having been entered on or around June 18th by the, the father of Wayne, who apparently has concerns about the, the, the safety of his child or the propriety of the environment that uh, Ms. Matthews has for his child, as there's been an ex parte order entered in that case. And I find it to stretch credulity a bit to suggest that, um, that Ms. Um, Matthews has not somehow retaliated with a CPS complaint um, by tr against Mr. Corsher in trying to allege that Wayne was the subject to some kind of um, sexual abuse on the father's time since she already had done that historically and nothing happened. But you make a report and there'll be an investigation that will start. And so that may be what, what she's doing at this point. At any event, Judge, we're trying to decide what we should do moving forward at this point. And sadly, we have a great deal of instability um, on behalf of Ms. Matthews right now. She's in a house that is owned, originally we thought, it was owned by Sean Dillon, who is the person whom she has an eight-month-old child with, Carter. 
um, that person, Sean Dillon, is prohibited by virtue of your order from having any contact with these children. That was something that Ms. Matthews had agreed upon. Why? Because as she's testified, she was the victim of domestic violence at the hands of Mr. Dillon. Mr. Dillon, again, um, somebody who's connected to the house whom she's living in, the father of a child she has, is being prosecuted for a domestic violence offense, and he has a no contact bond against him, prohibiting contact even with her. Um, so we, we've heard from Ms. Matthews, who is going to be leaving the home as early as April. She hasn't left. We don't know if she's going to leave. Um, we don't know what the status is with the relationship with Mr. Dillon, but apparently he's, he's going to be leaving. Child Protective Services had opened up an investigation while this case apparently was pending. Because of the domestic violence that happened while this action was pending, and there was a, the child was present at the time that that incident happened. Those, those charges still remain ongoing. Um, so we don't know exactly, the, we don't have residential stability for Ms. Matthews. We have orders that have been entered in this case uh, that speak for themselves. We have another order that's been entered in a case with Mr. Corser where that child's been removed from the mother's care. We have the mother unemployed and now presumably not receiving support from any source. She's in a house that's owned by a perpetrator of domestic violence against her, his, his family members. She's going to be going, leaving to go somewhere at some point in time. We have a lot of instability um, in the house and we have a new CPS investigation that apparently has been opened up that's somewhat collateral to this case, but just suggests that there's more um, chaos that seems to be plaguing um, Ms. Matthews' home. You've heard the testimony from my client about the chronic concerns that he's had about head lice conditions that have been investigated by CPS, about the about uh, sewer water that was running outside of the home that the children tracked through and had fecal matter on them when they came into the car. That my clients had actually taken pictures of, of that condition and how that uh, looked. And so my client, as you'll see, Judge, in your May 25 order, my client had agreed, wanted her to have some time and has agreed to the alternating weekend parenting time arrangement but things are not, um, are, do not seem to be improving. And while I was hopeful that there would be an improvement, things have gone the other direction in terms of, uh, in terms of the um, domestic violence that uh, is involved with the family members of Ms. Uh, Matthews, again, whom she, the person whom she has a child with. Well, we've heard from the counselors about the, the, the fears that um, the one child lady has about, Sean, about Mr. Dillon uh, who seems to be a, a around in, in some capacity. Um, I, and um, I, it would, I, I believe, Your Honor, that it would be appropriate to maintain the current order the way it is, to have the children continue with the counseling that they're availing themselves of, and to um, set this matter for a perhaps a, another a review or a pretrial conference and, and or set the matter for a final trial for final disposition um, on the issue of custody, as that is still something that would be before the court, although Your Honor does have a great deal of, of evidence that would obviously be uh, material to a final disposition in this case. Thank you, Judge. All right. Mr. Mann. Yes, Judge. Uh, it used to be that when you were a victim of a crime, you were a victim of a crime, but now I guess that's changed because now she's the bad person because this guy beat her up and there's a no contact order and she's moving back to her home that she owns, but because the other people hadn't moved out yet, she's kind of backed up, which happens all the time. Happens all the time. In the meantime, he's being gracious enough to stay away from him, but he seems to be around, I guess. I'm not sure exactly what that means. But in looking at these two um, ex parte orders, it's interesting because they seem as though they were kind of coordinated here. So they, we have a coordinated attack going on from two different fathers that were allow, allowing the children to visit around mother, even though they were supposedly uh, a fearful and there was a molestation between the kids. But uh, my client, I guess, was allowing it or something. So they stopped their parenting time and then they decided to allow it around her which makes no sense to me at all. Uh, they talk about all this fear about the child or whatever, but 
in their report, they actually say that the counselors recommend that the fathers have the children. Uh, I didn't hear that. I didn't see that. Uh, I didn't hear any of that testimony. Uh, in fact, what I find is that mother has been deprived of the children. Mr. Honeywell has kept the children, uh, which is funny because Mr. Raines characterizes my client calling CPS or town CPS about this other child molesting Wayne as a retaliation, even though Mr. Honeywell admitted that he's called uh, CPS three or four times on my client for various things over the years that nothing has ever stuck. Uh, and then he comes to the sewer, sewer running, and uh, she made channels and funneled the water and this and that. Well, we, we provided the bill. It got clogged with roots and it, it got fixed. Uh, in other words, what it seems as though there's been a lot of creating um, hysteria and creating um, situations, mainly stemming from this domestic violence of my client, uh, to somehow put all this blame and all these things on her with concerns and all this and that. But the fact of the matter is, uh, the kids are getting counseling. There's my client did the appropriate thing when she was attacked, she charged him. He's being prosecuted. She's moving out and moving into her own home, which she owned before. And both Mr. Honeywell and well, Mr. Honeywell knew about it, knew her other house, knows she owns it. Now, her working or not working is, I, I, I'm a little kind of surprised because, well, that's never been an issue. That sure wasn't in their complaint. But, uh, you know, there again, I don't know that that's part of the irreparable harm that would fall on the kids since she was taking care of them all this time. She still takes care of herself and so on and so forth. So I, I don't see by clear and convincing evidence that this that some irreparable harm was going to fall on the children if this order wasn't issued. And I certainly don't see that it uh, irreparable harm that's going to continue for it to continue in place. Clearly, there's all the safeguards. The, the perpetrator of the domestics is not there. She's moving out when her people get out of her house. It, they have to be evicted. And so basically, that's where we are. I've seen nothing in the evidence that would, in the, that would suggest that my client is a problem at all. I don't believe that any of this rises to a change of circumstance. But I'm asking the court to, to vacate the ex parte order and return the parenting time immediately to its previous, uh, its previous status. I'm going to answer this ex parte order and the other one, which are a lot, it's already been addressed in a lot of this, this hearing. And they're just regurgitating the same things in the the other document. That's why I say it seems as though there's a coordinated attack here. So I'm asking the court to to dismiss this matter and return my client's parenting time to its previous status. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Rains. You're muted. Thank you. Uh, there is there is no coordination of litigation that's been involved in this case. I think rather what's happened is we have another father, in addition to Mr. Honeywell, who is concerned about the propriety of the um, arrangements that Ms. Um, Matthews has had, probably reasonably shares the same concerns about the home environment, the fact that there has been one or two girls who've been victimized in that home, the fact that there is domestic violence who has occurred, that has occurred within that home, the fact that there's been a child protective services investigation regarding domestic violence that has occurred within that home. Um, those, are, those are the hallmarks. That is what characterizes the home environment of Ms. Matthews right now. And the fact that there would be an, another father who would be taking action in this case is absolutely anticipated and appropriate because there should be a situation addressed with, um, with this other minor child, Wayne. Um, the, we, we haven't ever seen a bill. I don't believe that's ever been posted as it relates to the sewer situation, but we, do, we have had testimony about that. Has my client contacted Child Protective Services? Absolutely as one should if you have these concerns. If you have chronic head lice, as he has reported, you would contact that and that has been investigated. If you have concerns about a sewer line uh, that's from the, from the home that the children are traipsing through, then you would contact Children's Protective Services as well as you would in the event if your eldest daughter has been a victim of sexual assault in the household. 
what what has happened unfortunately with Ms. Matthews is she has not adequately ensured the protection of those children. There was an agreement that these children participate in counseling and my client took the lead in getting that done. But unfortunately, Ms. Matthews was not vigilant and was not willing to follow through on that. And what has happened apparently is both of these fathers have had to take matters into their hands to remove the children from that environment and to move Wayne from an environment where that has occurred. That seems to be entirely appropriate what's happened. Judge, it would seem to, we, we don't even know where, if these children were to be returned on any type of a shared arrangement with Ms. Matthews, we don't even know where they'd be living. We, this home is not owned by her. I think she's indicated it's owned by another family member of hers, maybe a grandmother. We don't really know if it's going to be available. She's previously testified about her moving on, on April 1st. Well, it's past July. And so we've got three more months under our belt with no move. Rather, where is she staying? in the home of, a, of basically the perpetrator of the domestic violence against her. You know, Mr. I, I appreciate Mr. Um, Mr. Leon's uh, candid, um, and I wouldn't say glib, but his candid approach to this, where he said she was beaten up. And I don't think she testified about it that way. She was a little more maybe defensive or apologetic about her perpetrator, but if she was really beaten up, she would want to get out of that house. But she's still staying there. Um, and so we don't know where she's next going to live perhaps a setting a review hearing date when we find out where she's living, when she's moved would be best because my client is reasonably concerned that Mr. Dillon would be coming back to a home in which he has a, an interest in and that these children are prohibited from being around him uh, whatsoever. So there's, there's, this, there's this instability judge in terms of, of watching the kids, her residential stability, her relational stability as it relates to Mr. Dillon, whom she's lived with for some time. Now, apparently that's breaking apart and it's all over. Um, we know your honor is certainly aware as, as a practitioner, as well as a, as a judge of the, the, the dynamics of domestic violence and how people can return to those relationships and be re-victimized and they can expose their children to that. I don't know if that's the reason that she hasn't moved out by April 1st, hoping that this case would blow over. I don't know, but that's a, a real concern that, uh, that I would have and the court should have in this case. And so judge, uh, we ask that you maintain the, uh, the personal protection. We're not asking that the time that Ms. Matthews has be reduced, even though there would be, there would be, you know, I think reason for that. She doesn't have any time. It sounds like with, uh, even with Mr. Corser pursuant to another court order, but, um, um, with Wayne Corser, but we're not asking that the time be um, reduced, simply that it be maintained, Judge. Thank you. Okay. All right. I'm going to take a recess for just a second. Thank you.
right, it's Mr. Leon and Mr. Raines. All right, thank you. Let's get Mr. Leon back, there we go. All right, so in this case, um, we had testimony from Olivia Matthews. We had testimony from Lance Honeywell. We had testimony from Catherine Hancock, um, who handled the intensive home-based therapy. And we had testimony from Amber Holland, who is a limited licensed counselor. Um, both of those have worked with Laney. It's clear from the testimony as well as well, from the testimony that there was an incident or multiple incidents that did occur in the home of Miss Matthews over a period of time. And Mr. Raines appropriately did file a motion for ex parte order for exclusive parenting time based upon the fact that a domestic violence occurred in the home as well as um, inappropriate sexual contact by um, against the minor girls. So at this time, the court is going to continue the current order we have at this point, giving mom every other weekend. I am going to order that there is to be absolutely no contact with Mr. Dillon. He is not allowed on the property when the girls are there. Absolutely no contact with Wayne. Um, the girls will continue counseling. No contact with person A. Um, and then I am going to set this for a review. I am not making a decision on the request for a motion for change of custody. I'm going to leave it joint legal and joint physical, but I'm going to set this for review in, um, on September, oh, um, let me see if I can find a book, hold on. Let's look at um, no, that day's full. Hold on. All right, I'm looking at September twenty seventh at two ten. That's agreeable, Your Honor. September 27 at 210. Um, here's what I'd like to know. At that point, I'd like for Ms. Matthews to be out of Mr. Dillon's home. And um, so um, we will review. And at that time, if the circumstances haven't changed, and we'll have a further proceeding on the issue of the change of custody. All right, so no contact with Mr. Dillon, no contact with the minor Wayne. The girls are to continue counseling, no contact with person A. And I'll continue the every other weekend um, until such time as mom has moved into her own home. But definitely by September 27th, I would like to see that. So that will be via Zoom. So we'll see you September 27th at 2.10 p.m. Very good. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Anything else? Nothing further. I have nothing. Mr. Leon, you are muted. No, I'm good, Judge. I don't have anything else. Okay. Everyone have a good weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Leon. Thanks. See you later, man.